Hey everybody, this is the last worksheet of the unit. Uh, congratulations on making it to here. This is a rather long podcast because it's all about math and all about equations. So let me pause this for a minute and just work out some of the equations here just to make sure that you understand what we're doing. I'm going to do this once and then I'll just use them throughout the whole podcast. We know that energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Now we know that Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. Now, if I'm trying to solve for energy, all I have to do is multiply these two numbers together. If I'm trying to solve for frequency, however, if I want to solve for frequency, I can divide both sides by h. So I'm left with the frequency is equal to the energy divided by h. And again, remember that h is still 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th. So I will often do, because I'll be solving for frequency a lot, energy divided by 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th. Okay. Now the other one I will use is the speed of light is equal to um, 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, which is the same as 3 times 10 to the 17th nanometers per second. And depending upon what my what units I want, whether I want meters or nanometers, or whether I'm given meters or nanometers, I will use the appropriate equation. Now remember that the speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. Now if I want to solve for frequency and get frequency all alone, I can do that by dividing both sides by the wavelength. If on the other hand I want to get the wavelength all alone, then I divide both sides by the frequency. So. In both cases, speed of light's on top, and uh, those are the equations I'm going to use as we go through the worksheets. Okay. All right. So here I'm given energy, and I want to calculate the frequency. Okay, because I can do that. So energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. That means the frequency is equal to energy over Planck's constant. So that's equal to 6.3 times 10 to the minus 19th joules divided by 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th, right? 34th. Okay, and that is going to give me an answer of 9.5 times 10 to the 14th. All right, and that uh, this is frequency, so this is cycles per second. Now, if I look at 9.5 times 10 to the 14th on my chart. I notice that 10 to the 14th is right here, so I might actually be in the visible range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate this in nanometers. Now the reason I'm calculating this in nanometers is notice that these units here are in nanometers. Now I do have numbers here that are in meters, right? So I have to decide which one I'm going to be in. I'm going to choose nanometers just because it looks like it's kind of hard to tell exactly what kind of light it is. So I want a more precise number, okay, or a number that makes a little bit more sense to me. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to solve for wavelength, and I know that wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. So since I'm going to nanometers, I'm going to say 3 times 10 to the 17th nanometers, and I'm going to divide it by 9.5 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second, and this is going to give me, this is nanometers per second, this is going to give me nanometers as my answer. And when I divide it out, I come out with 320 nanometers. Right? Now, you'll notice up here you have two sig figs, so my answer here is going to have two sig figs. What is 320 nanometers? Well, if I look at this chart down here, I'll notice that 320 nanometers is about there. It's off the chart, so but off only a little bit, so this is going to be ultraviolet light, just slightly more powerful than violet light. All right, let's try this one. We have 2.4 times 10 to the minus 7th. Just a moment, you'll notice that uh, you have two sig figs. Your answer is going to have two sig figs. All right. First thing we can do, because we're given wavelength, we can calculate frequency. And frequency is the speed of light divided by the wavelength. If you don't know that, go back to page 1. I did that on the opening slide. All right. So we're, notice we're given meters right here. So I'm going to use 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second so that I can cancel out my units. 
I have to keep my units the same. This is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. And so I'm going to be left with cycles per second. And that's going to be 1.3 times 10 to the 15th cycles per second. And let's see, where's that going to be? 10 to the 15th, 10 to the 15th in frequencies right about there. Looks like I'm probably going to have ultraviolet. All right, but let's keep checking just to be sure. Uh, if we look at the wavelength, it's 2.4 times 10 to the minus 7th. 2.4 times 10 to the minus 7th is going to be here. So it looks like it is going to be, in fact, ultraviolet. And that's actually 270 nanometers. So we are actually off the chart. We're just a little bit more ultraviolet than we were last time. So how much energy do we have? Well, energy is equal to Planck's constant times our frequency. So that's equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th, because that's Planck's constant. We're going to multiply it by our frequency, which is 1.3 times 10 to the 15th cycles per second. And that's going to give us an answer for energy of 8.3 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. All right. So let's look at our next one. Notice that this has three sig figs. Remember your rule, the decimal point is present. So we start on the Pacific side and count to the other ocean. There are three digits there. Right. This is our frequency. So we want to be able to figure out our wavelength. So our wavelength is going to be equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. And our energy is going to be equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. So let's see. What do we want to do? We're going to use meters here. Might as well use meters per second. 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we're going to divide it by 100, which is going to give us 3 times 10 to the sixth meters. That is a very, 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 very long wave. Okay, So uh, 3 times 10 to the sixth meters, if we look at this, we go 3 times 10 to the sixth meters is a wavelength. We go right off the chart. So we're about there. Let's run into really, really long radio waves. Okay, Now, we said our frequency was 100, which is 1 times 10 to the 2. So 1 times 10 to the 2, oh look, 10 to the 2 is also off the chart. Right, so we're just checking to make sure that our numbers actually work. So we're out here somewhere. Sorry. So what's our energy? Well, our energy is Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th times the frequency. And the frequency is 100. So that's going to be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 32nd joules for our energy, which isn't much. It's a very, very long wave. All right, how about this one? Energy is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 14th. So I want to be able to calculate frequency. And frequency is going to be energy divided by Planck's constant. So our energy is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 14th. And Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. When I work that out, I get 2.3 times 10 to the 19th. And that is in cycles per second. Now, I can now use that information because I want to figure out the wavelength. And the wavelength is the speed of light divided by the frequency. So that means the speed of light is, well, do I want to do, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and do it in meters. If I'm not sure, I'm going to tend to do it in meters. OK, when I actually do the math, I'm going to come up with 1.3 times 10 to the minus 11th meters. All right, so our wavelength is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 11th. 
Our wavelength is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 11th. So it looks like I'm down here in x-rays. Let's look at our frequency. Our frequency is 2.3 times 10 to the 19th. 10 to the 19th is right above that. So yes, we've done the right thing. We're sitting here in x-rays. Okay, so that's that one. All right, how about if you have a wavelength of 10 meters? That is a very, very long wavelength. All right, so this is going to be a, a very low frequency. And you'll notice it has two sig figs. So we're going to make sure that we only use two sig figs here. All right. So what we're trying to do is we have a wavelength, so we want to calculate our frequency, which is the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So that's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by, notice we're given in meters, all right, that's why we chose meters per second. And I'm dividing by 10, so that gives me 3 times 10 to the 7th uh, cycles per second. So that's our frequency. And we want to calculate our energy, which is h times the frequency, so it's 6.626 times 10 to the minus, 20, uh, minus 34th times 3 times 10 to the 7th cycles per second. And that's going to give us 2.0 times 10 to the minus 26. And that's in joules second. That's in joules. Okay, so 3 times 10 to the 7th cycles per second, 3 times 10 to the 7th cycles per second, 10 to the 7th cycles per second, that's going to be right there, okay, so, and remember that our wavelength was 10, so that would be 10 to the 1, so we're sitting in radio waves. Okay, let's keep on going. Our next one is 2.2. Sorry, I'm lost. I'm trying to find my piece of paper. There we are. Okay, looks like we're on number six. 2.2 times 10 to the 13th second. So let's let's look what that is. That's our frequency is times 10 to the 13th. So 10 to the 13th is looks like it's going to be infrared. 10 to the 13th. Looks, looks like it's going to be infrared. So we're going to go and make sure, so we're going to calculate our wavelength. And our wavelength is C divided by nu, which is, well, I'm going to, um, I'm going to calculate this one in meters. So it's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we're dividing by 2.2 times 10 to the 13th meters per second. And when I do that math, I come up with 1.4 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, and that is wavelength. So that's going to be in meters. So times 10 to the minus fifth meters, so let's see, 10 to the minus fifth meters, you'll notice is down here. So that looks like infrared, so it looks like our numbers work, we're doing the right thing. Right? Let's go off and take care of our energy. Our energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, so that's 6.626, times 10 to the minus 34th, times uh, frequency, and that's what we're given, is 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 13th, and that will give us an answer of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 20th joules. Okay, very small amount of energy. Okay, uh, let's do the last one. We have 525 nanometers. Now, notice the work is given to you in nanometers. So, as a result, when we calculate frequency, which is the speed of light divided by the wavelength, we're going to use our nanometers one. So, that's going to be. Uh, 3.0 times 10 to the negative uh, times 10 to the 17th. That's a 17th. Okay, we're dividing that by 525. When we do that, we come up with a frequency of 5.71 times 10 to the 14th. All right.
So, uh, wavelength is 525 nanometers. That tells us without a question that it's in the visible range. 571 times 10 to the 14th. So let's see what happens. Here's 10 to the 14th, so we're right in here. And it says we're visible, and the number is 525. So that number is going to be right smack dab in the middle of the green range. Sorry. So we're green. All right. So now I still have to calculate energy. And energy is Planck's constant times the frequency. So that's 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th. We're multiplying that by 5.71 times 10 to the 14th. Okay, and when we multiply that out, we come up with 3.79 times 10 to the minus 19th. And that's energy, so that's in joules. All right, off to number two. All right, um, here we have carbon, helium, and hydrogen. These are simply the emission spectras that they're talking about. And you have different lines in different locations. The locations aren't the same. Okay, we learned all about that, saw all of that, okay. And so they have some questions. So why are they different? Well, we've talked about this a lot. If you go back to um, an earlier worksheet, we talked about they're different because you have a different number of protons in the middle. And as a result, they're holding on to these electrons with a different amount of strength. So in some cases, for example, lithium, it's easier to grab an electron, whereas chlorine, it's very, very hard to do. Okay, so that's why they're different. Why are they not a continuous series of colors? Well, let's just look at one particular electron. If we have one particular electron that goes from here to here, there are only a finite number of levels it can go to. And when it comes back down, it gives off light. So one particular electron might, over time, give off three or four or five different colors of light. But then it runs out. Okay. So as a result, you can only get a few colors. Right? And that's what the wavelengths are. When the electrons fall, they must give off a certain quanta of energy. And it's always the same for every atom of that particular atom. How can we use this information in the field of astronomy? When, when we look at distant planets or stars, specifically stars, we can tell what they're made of because of what light they emit. It all depends on what's being burned. All right. So, anyway, that should do it. All right. If you have any questions, see me in class. You are done with this set of podcasts, with this unit. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.